Hello and welcome to Academy Live episode 21. 21, hello and welcome. Anders here, David's here, back from last week's... Uh, yes, I was, uh, I was in my cabin down south of, south of Sweden uh, doing some really, really nerdy writings. Really That's deep, true. yep. Yeah, you rewrote uh, a lot of your uh, light theory classes. Exactly, I rewrote my all my theories actually about light mm. and made them into one unified, crazy cool uh, concept that I will present in somehow somewhere, wherever yeah. possible. That's true. I think uh, Japan is the first exactly. one to experience. Exactly, Japan is the first one out. Tokyo, uh, yep. Tokyo, and uh, you are going to be the first one that is going to experience this new way of explaining how light works. Uh, it go it's going to be exciting to meet you all guys there. I heard that the, it's already fully booked, the lifestyle, the lifestyle workshops. Oh, nice. Yep, so, um, but we still have seats left on the, um, the theory day, day number one. So, and that is actually the place where you're going to probably get the most new stuff out of it because mm -hmm. you have more time to talk uh, but the lifestyle shoes will be great as well yes and you will be along too that's true yep. i'll be there helping out uh, and sometimes maybe uh, giving you some challenges by doing something crazy <laughs> 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 to put keep you on your toes <laughs> and vice versa <laughs> exactly exactly <laughs> like we do always yeah. do <laughs> so that'll be exciting so that's going to be towards end of uh, november yes yeah uh, awesome, and we have a lot of people here. Uh, we got, I see Swedes, I see Houston, of course, I see Denmark here, and oh, yes, excellent. So, awesome. Um, today's topic. Today's topic, yeah, we're we gonna have a topic today. I think we should, because we should. you have put up some stuff here. Why uh -huh. not do a topic about this? And I think we, we have even prepared some. Uh, Pictures and even a yeah, you presentation. Yeah, yeah, so that might be a good idea. Yeah. So let's have a topic. Today's topic will be snoots, barn door, and grids. Uh, so we're going to basically talk about uh, what they are, what they do, um, and what they don't do, and what and what they aren't. Yeah. Yep. And and also uh, kind of how to use them, right? Exactly. Because uh, I know at least for me in the beginning of my life career, um, it was a bit confusing because it feels like they all do the same thing. Uh, why should, why, why do they have three different types of uh, light shapers that do the same thing? Exactly. That's I mean, the snoot, for example, you put it on your flash and it makes some kind of snoot thing. And the barn doors, let me take them out just so we can flex them a bit. It is almost the same thing, right? You are, you have these flaps and you are covering up some light and yeah. we have the grids of course that almost seems to that they are doing the same thing so I yeah. think your question is really is a good way to put it what is the difference between those things when do you use what and why yeah. that is what we are going to talk about today cool and uh, we have here in front of us the uh, OCF versions of uh, the snoot, the barn door and the grids. And of course they are available in uh, other formats as well uh, for uh, the uh, pro system. Yeah, I just bring one up here. So like the barn doors for the, the pro system here, much more bigger. Yeah. And um, the, I mean the concept is still the same. They are just smaller, lighter, more easy to put in your back pocket if you want to. Awesome. Yeah. Cool. Uh, so, but let's uh, focus on, on, on these guys. They all do the same thing, but they are different uh, sizes. I mean, just uh, bring out the, the snoot for the pro heads. It's a huge difference. So, uh, basically, yeah, this, no, wait, this is a good thing. <laughs> <laughs> you look like a snoot. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, so these ones, these ones are made of, don't make a nice noise like the Magnum does. It doesn't. No. But it's big and it's kind of hard to bring with you. Uh, you can't fold it or anything. This one is much smaller, easier to bring, and it's also in plastic, so it doesn't weigh as much, which is good. Yep. So for a traveling photographer, that really needs small stuff. 
yeah, this is really great. For a photographer that has a lot of big cage, uh, cages and uh, maybe in a studio. you're in a studio, great stuff. Yeah. Or rental studios, rental of course studios. they have these. Of course. They prefer these because they, they last forever. Yeah, mm. actually I bought two of these for ever ago, <laughs> for many, many years ago. Quarter past I mean, forever. Yeah, I mean, they never break. Yeah. They are really sturdy. These ones are also really, really sturdy. Uh, but I wouldn't, you know, put it under a car. I could put this under a car, I yeah. suppose. So different applications, different weights and sturdiness, of course. I'll bring this down. Yeah. Uh, and then please, uh, as always, uh, post questions uh, on the comments and we will respond to them. Uh, we love questions. Has frozen up. It'll come come alive. Uh, so let's start with maybe uh, the snoot. Yes, the snoot. So, so the concept of the snoot actually is to put this on your flash like this, and you will have this cone of light, and you will have this small spot. Yeah, that that is the basic concept of it. Um, or, I mean, that so it basically it, it limits the light spread. Exactly. So what happens is that it limits the light spread. So all the light that comes out from the flash in this direction is blocked by these uh, the walls. Of course. I mean, that is it's really really simple concept. But what you will have out of it, you have to look at it in, in two ways. You will have this coverage of light, which will be a small patch of light, a small dot of light, depending on, of course, how far away you have it, you, will, you can make it bigger or smaller. Uh, that is one direction when, you're looking at, when you are looking at the light from this direction. But if you look at the light from that direction into the light source, you actually make the light source smaller. So That's true. And, and even more true with the, if you bring up the other one for the pro system. You make you go from basically this sized light source, which is the zoom reflector, to this size. You really make it a lot smaller. And why do you want to have a smaller light source? Well, I would guess that you want to have sharper uh, shadow edges, for exactly. example. Exactly, which will create uh, a more hard feeling of the light with smaller, sharper shadow edges. The penumbras get smaller. So with this one, you get even smaller, even smaller penumbras, smaller shadow edges even harder light, so yeah. to speak. And of course, with the big snoot, if you back it up enough, you will have yeah, a small one, relatively right. the same size, but this one is already small from the beginning. So to get a really small light source, to get it that really hard light, this is actually a really quick way of getting that. Yeah. That cool. is, I would actually say that if I would suppose to choose one of these to be my favorite uh, modifier yeah. for making a small light source, that's the one to go for. Okay. Th that is how I use them. Cool. Yeah. Uh, we just had a, a little hi here from someone special. Oh, Holly. Holly. Hello, who was Holly. Guest here a couple of weeks ago, and uh, actually last Wednesday was Halloween. Yes. And uh, she sent us a little package. Actually, two packages. Uh, yeah, exactly. Yeah. So two packages, and they came uh, on Thursday. So they came one day too late. Um, and we were supposed to wear what was in the package exactly. on Halloween. But just to let you know, uh, uh, Holly, we have the t-shirts under here. <laughs> and they do fit. So we have these skeleton t-shirts yes. under my shirt and, and this one. So even though it's not Halloween, we still wear them uh, yes. just because they're from you, Holly. So thank you so much. Thank you, Holly. <laughs> So that was the snoot. Should we um, jump over uh, and show a little bit on how you uh, tested them? Earlier? Yes, because we tested them earlier. Yeah. And I will jump over to the other camera. And there you are. Hello. I will go up close. Here we have the snoot. OK. So I will put the snoot onto this B10, like this. Because what I wanted to test was how did the coverage look? Was the coverage uh, a round or a square one or you know triangle shaped or whatever? Uh, and I put it on like this. I have my flash straight 
towards Mr. Ken here so we can see this coverage of the light. And I want to take a picture to see how the coverage look, how big it is, how yeah. soft the fall off is, because that is the interesting, the interesting part of the snoot. So let's take a test image. And I'll jump over to this camera and, and here you see two images. Uh, on to the, to the left you see the B1 with its uh, natural uh, light spread. Where the, the barn doors is on but you have flapped Yeah, they're fully the flexed doors. out so it's uh, only the, uh, the B10's light pattern. And then you see the snoot on the uh, right side. So you so see kind of what happens. Yeah, so, so we, have, we have removed all the light that is uh, going in a wider direction just to focus the light on one small spot. One interesting thing to see is actually the, uh, the shape of the light or of the shadow edges. I don't know if you can see that on your picture. Uh, yes, you can. Is it possible to see? Uh, the shadow edges are really, really sharp. Uh, oh, no, sorry, yes, uh, no, you don't see the oh, you don't. images. So, thanks to the small, the size of the light source is really small, we get really, really sharp shadow edges, if you want to have a hard light. And the patch of light, really small, and the fall off, it's a smooth, nice fall off. That is the, 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 uh, the snoot. The good thing with the snoot is that you know what you're going to get. You will get this. That is really great if you want to uh, m just have a small patch of light. Perfect. But what if you want to change this patch of light? If you want to change the shape of the coverage, that is when you, I think that you should look into something else, something different. Cool. Uh, so uh, why don't we take a look at grids? I'll come over with the grids for you. Thank you. There Thank you. you. So here we have the OCF grid, and this is like the uh, 30 degrees. And they are available in three different versions. So you can go them. close here. 30 degrees, really big holes. 10 degrees. 20 degrees. Smaller holes, holes for a smaller uh, light coverage. So, I will put on the 30 degrees on the B10. Like this. And I will take an image so we can take a look at how the light coverage looks like. And now, of course, since we are so professional, we have prepared, so we have the three images. Boom. Like yes, that. boom, boom, boom. So there you see the, the OCF grid 30 degrees and the 20 and the 10 degrees. And if you wonder what that line is on the back there, it basically it's, uh, it's a 50 centimeters, which is probably about a little bit more than a foot, maybe two, two almost two, 1.8 feet between the each piece of tape. So this one, uh, the 30 degrees probably then, it, it has a light spread of uh, about three meters. And the distance from the wall is? Two meters. Two meters from yeah. the wall. And, uh, and then when you go to the 20 degrees, you see it's even tighter. Now it's only two meters. And then on the 10 degrees is uh, even less than that. It's almost one meter. And um, the one thing with these grids is that I know, David, you like the, uh, the fall off where the kind of the, the area between light and shadow. Exactly. I think, well, this is my personal uh, perception of this. I think that the fall off from the center of this coverage, the fall off into darkness is, is softer. It's a, it has a softer feeling than from the snoot. So it blends in in a nicer way, I think. I mean, that is, of course, what you, what you want to do with it. But this is the look, a typical look from a grid. The fall off is really, really smooth and really, really nice. Um, and compared to a snoot, the snoot is fixed. The grid, you can change the size of the coverage. And the whole point 
of a grid. What is the point? Why would you use a grid? I would say that we, there is three reasons, three main reasons. First, when you get this smaller coverage of lights, you can put the light focus on maybe like the face and the upper body and the rest will go into darkness to make the face really pop out. That is great. You can have it like, if I remove Mr. Ken here, uh, if you want to create a wall that is more interesting than just a flat wall, just to put a small, a thin um, uh, 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 patch of light like this actually creates like a vignetting effect on the background. So if you have, now we have the flash on the wrong side of Mr. Cam, but if you have a grid behind like this, this is an extreme example, then actually you can create a vignetting effect. Like a halo. A halo effect. So you will have the brightness behind him that will go into darkness in a really soft and beautiful way. That is something that is really, really good. And the third thing is that if your image, if your actual image is here, the rest of the room outside of the image is actually controlling the contrast in the image. If your light is hitting outside of your image on the walls, uh, floor, the roof, etc., on Anders, it will reflect back. You will create new uh, light sources. So if I remove the grid, light will hit that wall and Anders, which will create new indirect light sources and the contrast will be lower. You will fill the shadows. So with grids, if you have a grid, even though the coverage may be fill the whole image, you still will have a lower contrast. So it is a contrast controlling thing that is really, really good. So there are, there are different theories on why. I've heard so many interesting uh, versions. Anything from that certain uh, light oh, you rays. You mean why you get a higher contrast with exactly. grids? Exactly. And that's because, I mean, I've heard that, you know, some photons don't, they don't pass, they get stuck in the grid. Okay, they get stuck the in the grid. Contrast creating uh, 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 photons, they get stuck in the grid. I've heard uh, that the light gets compressed. A compressed light from a grid that will no. create more compressed contrast. light here, that exactly. will create more contrast. Okay, yes. interesting one, interesting yeah. one. And, and so, so there are a lot of different things, but the, 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 the truth is that the only reason why you get more contrast from a grid is that you do not create any secondary light sources. Exactly. Right? You won't. And so if you would use a grid on a football field, yeah. would there be any difference in contrast? I would, would say it wouldn't be any difference in the contrast since you don't have any walls or Anderses sitting next by. Yeah that can be new indirect light sources. So, you, so the contrast thing, of course, only uh, works when you're inside, yeah. when you have walls and such. Cool. Yeah, so then we have to explain why you get high contrast with a grid. Uh, one thing I should say that, okay, maybe someone is thinking like, well, I wouldn't have a light like this with a grid straight on. I mean, who does that? That is kind of boring light. Of course, this is just to to, to, to visualize the, the light pattern. Spread, yeah. Exactly. So the spread of light, how does that look? You would, of course, use a grid somewhere else, like making a kicker or like a stroke of light on the wall or something. Yeah. But for this example, just to show the light pattern, just to show the spread of light, uh, this is the way we did it. Uh, so that's the grid. Fernando grids. asked a question here. Does it really make sense to add a honeycomb to the snoot? So adding a grid and then a snoot on top of that. Does it uh, make any sense? Well, I would say that it doesn't make any s sense um, because if you, if you put a grid on the, on the snoot, what will happen is that you would probably get just a tad smaller uh, light patch. Yeah. Uh, because if, I mean, if you use the 10 degree with the snoot, if you look at this picture uh, that we have on, on, let's see, let's jump over to this one. If you look at the right picture here, you see a very, very small patch on 10 degree. And if I jump back to the snoot, you see the snoot is slightly bigger. It's about two meters wide. So you would get maybe a little bit smaller 
uh, but I would say in general, no, it doesn't make sense to add a honeycomb to the snoot. Because uh, if you use, for example, the 30 degrees, then the, the snoot will be the one deciding on how big the patch will be. Exactly. And I mean, if, if, you, move, if you move the uh, light source closer to the wall, in this, for, uh, like for this example, you, will, you, can, you can be so precise with the size. So I wouldn't say there isn't any reason to put a grid on the snoot. It would just steal energy. Uh, oh, Pascal is asking, how about the depth of the grid? Well, so the, uh, there are certain grids, like for the um, uh, uh, zoom reflector, some of them are really deep. So the deeper uh, the grid is, then of course the more narrow the light patch will be. Yes. So these grids, am I on now? Yes. Oh, yes you are. So these grids are the same, all the same uh, thickness. There's, it is only the holes in the grid that is, that has, that is bigger or smaller. And, 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 and one good example is actually the, the new grids for the A1. Uh, and the new grids for the A1, uh, there is a 20 degree and a 10 degree. And the 10 degree, which is a tighter one, that one is actually deeper. I mean, the, 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 the honeycomb holes are longer. It becomes tighter. But the size of the holes are exactly the same. Yeah, so it only, uh, it's only the thickness. So if you could stack these up, if you have the same uh, kind, same uh, angle on the, of the grids and you stack them up, then you, of course you will get a smaller light spread. Yeah. We got a question, what's the difference when using the standard zoom reflector and their own grids? Well, uh, the, the degrees, uh, the, like the 10 degrees, 5 degrees or 20 degrees, that uh, is just the number that tells you how how the spread of light is from that specific uh, uh, grid. Yeah. But what will happen is that since the zoom reflector is a larger one, it is a larger light source. So that's the that's one difference if you uh, compare the OCF grids with the zoom uh, grids. I mean, they, they they're just physically larger. So yeah. it will have an impact on, on the shadow edges. But then we have, of course, the tricky part is when, when you get really, really close to a grid, <laughs> it becomes smaller. Actually. Yes, that is actually the, maybe the only situation when you are getting closer to, is that camera on now? Yes. When you're is. getting closer to a light source, it normally gets bigger, like, uh, right? My hand, if this was a light source, it gets bigger when I get closer. But with a grid, actually oops, the light source will become smaller when you if get you take your hand away you have actually white background oh, okay cool Oop, i don't know if you can see it yeah but you have to be really really close Re oh yeah the camera so is there, so small yeah. so it's such a small camera but if you are extremely close with the grid you actually get a smaller light source that's interesting yeah uh, and this is caused by the occlusion of the the walls inside the grid um, but I think that is the only <laughs> situation when you can get a light, light source to be smaller, smaller when you get closer to the to your subject. So now that we confuse everybody with that that one. Yeah, sorry, forget <laughs> that. But it, but still, is the truth. But it is the truth, and we try to stick to the truth as much as we can. Exactly, but that is also only when you're really up close. Yeah, you won't. That is not an effect that will affect anything because you never have a grid so close. So. Don't That's even cool. think about that. One thing that I think we should address is the depth of light. I know that many people think that when you have a grid on, you only have the parallel ra rays of light, and parallel rays of light means longer depth of light. You know? The inverse square law and etc. But that is not true. You, you don't get a longer depth of light using a grid because the rays that actually is hitting your subject, it is the same rays, the same parallel rays, if you have a grid or not. So you will have the same uh, fall off in the light. So the inverse square law still applies. It's no difference if you put on a grid or not. But if you put on a um, lens, like a Fresnel lens or uh, yeah. another optical lens, then you can actually tweak the inverse square law. 
And what actually is happening then is that you're just replacing the, the, the position of the light source to an imaginary position. So if you have a lens, with, so you get longer depth of light, it still applies to the inverse square law as if the light source is put further away. But that was also uh, a nerdy over course. <laughs> so the grids does not change your depth of light. Cool, and, uh, and grids are available both hard and soft. Hard ones for, like we have here on the, on the B10, and we also have soft ones that we put on uh, uh, different yeah. soft boxes. So exactly. So they ha all have the same function. Uh, the difference is with soft reflectors, you don't have different degrees. They normally have the same uh, degree of spread. Yeah, and I would say that you use them in a different way. You, I mean, you use them for different applications. Yeah. A soft grid you often have on soft boxes, which, are, which you use for like uh, portraits and such. And, and the grid controls the contrast. You get less, uh, more contrast because the walls aren't, aren't bright and so on, etc., yeah. etc. So we have a new thing here. Yes, yeah, so if you pop off the grid, Grid goes off like that. I'll give you... Pop goes the grid and in comes the barn door. Barn door, barn will, door. Yes, the barn door. Why is it called barn door, Anders? Uh, because maybe it looks like doors on a barn. So the barn door, barn doors, uh, it's four flaps like this. You can control how much you want to cover the light source in four directions. Let's put it on and see yeah. what... So we had one happen. question here from Pascal again regarding the, uh, the grids. Okay. Uh, the penumbra is on all sides the same, right? Uh, since the, the, the grids are in most cases round. So uh, for all the round grids, like for the A1, the, the OCF grids, etc., then yes, the penumbra will be the same in all directions. Yeah, of but course. Yeah. if you have a soft grid on the one by six soft box, for example, it will not be the same. But that is, not co uh, that is caused by this one by six shape. The grid exactly. doesn't affect the penumbras in any ways. Yeah, so, so yeah, see, that's a better thing to say, that the grids do not change the penumbras. Uh, it, it, it's the light source behind the grid that actually dep depicts the penumbra. Yes. And one could say that, hmm, shouldn't you get a, uh, many shadow edges because you have your light source in, uh, is divided by the grid into many small shadow uh, light sources. But actually, no, because they are so close to each other. So the small, um, walls. The small walls, the shadows from the walls are totally uh, disappeared. They, they disappear really quick. Yeah. Just a small distance from the light source, then it will be totally, you know, smeared out and disappeared. So you won't get any shattered uh, shadow edges. You won't. You will still have a smooth shadow edge. Now I will cool. put on the barn doors. Barn doors. Barn doors are fun. You can do a lot of interesting things here. Yes. And so this, this is basically uh, if we had the snoot and the grids, basically limiting the uh, spread the light spread, the barn doors actually control the um, this light spread. Exactly, that is the difference. I will just repeat what you just said. The snoot and the grid, how did you say it now again? They limit. They limit the light spread. Exactly, they limit the light spread. The barn door, you can control how you limit the light spread. That is really important, a big important difference. You can shape your light spread. You can shape the stamp of light. So if you take down the, the top one and the bottom one. I take down the top one and the bottom one like this. Yeah. So now basically what we've done is that uh, we have, uh, we wanted to take away the light that hits the floor yeah. and the ceiling. So if I would place myself down like this, I do not see any light source. In other words, I won't have any light here. In other words, this will not be a new light source that fills the shadow. In other words, darker shadows from below. Oh, and the same thing goes for the ceiling because we have flapped it down from the top and from the bottom. So we take a picture. Yes. Oh, hey. And then the image would look like the left one. 
uh, on these ones. Now it looks like uh, they're pretty th thin, but that's just because of the distance that we have the, bar the, the flash from, from, the, uh, from the subject. But you can see now that there are black patches above and below the center point. And that's basically taking away the light from the floor and the ceiling. Uh, and then, oh, sorry, I, this is, I had the wrong text. It's not OCF grid 30 degrees or 20 degrees, <laughs> 10 degrees. Ignore those texts there. This is all three are barn doors. And then the middle picture, we've made the, uh, the light source as small as possible. Yes. I could actually pop over to this camera and I can... Yeah, but not without the light then? Without the light, of course. You are so clever. Okay, is and then that... You, and you can go maybe... Uh, I could do like this. Yeah. So here we go, do you see it? Is yeah, it visible? Maybe even closer? Even closer, like this. Oh yeah, now all oh. good. <laughs> there we go. Okay, so... To make it as small as possible, in this case... Maybe back up, back up a little bit. Back up a little bit. Thank you, go. Anders. It's Not so good to have you here to yes. tell me where to be. <laughs> that is great. So, uh, the barn doors actually are in different sizes. You have two smaller ones that is angled like this, so they are a bit uh, thinner in the end here. And these ones are wider. So we have two wide ones and two smaller ones. You can depending on how you twist it, you can put it as you want it. Um, so, to make it as small as possible, we bring in those, bring on that one, I think maybe like that. We'll say that this was the way we did it. Yeah, exactly. Perfect. Uh, so, here we have a light source that is as small as possible with a barn door. And, and then then you can also, I mean, let's say that you have the image of Ken and then on the, on the right side you have a lot of walls but on, and you don't want to have light on, on the right side. Exactly. So what would you do then? I would do like this. I would actually, let's, okay, as Andrew said, if we, we have our light towards Ken, you are Mr. Ken now, and on this side, is this the right or is the yes, left side? Yes, absolutely. Yeah. This side, let's say that we have a hit that wall and if I do not want that if I want the light from this wall to disappear this is really good to do in this case I would actually twist this one so I would have well, now he's rotating the barn door perfect you just got a question from Martin can you please demonstrate how to rotate the barn door and you yes rotate. Perfect. so I just rotated it just like that yeah. so now I would have the wider side here so I can block out the light on the wall on this side so the wall won't fill the shadows so I can actually control the contrast, really, really nice by doing like this. If I will block out the light so the shadows will be too dark, perfect. I can always just bring this back. So I can really fine tune the contrast by doing like this. This is really a simple thing, but so powerful. And so here we got a, uh, actually a very good question that, that we have completely forgot. So no, no, keep it up, keep, keep bringing about that. Exactly, there we go. Because on the one that you just moved out, you can see a little bit of a cut out there. Yeah. What is that? Ooh, the cutout there, I would say that it is for putting on like a diffusion. Diffusion or a gel, for or example. Or a gel, for example. And so if you, this cutout here, uh, you can, so we, we can have some, some paper. So you would put a gel like this and like this. Da -da -da -da. And then you would have a Of course, you would have a see-through gel, and it could be an orange one or a blue one or... So it's a gel filter holder. Exactly. So yeah. you can also hold uh, gels there. Hmm, cool. I haven't never used them. I think they look like a happy mouth, actually, on a, on, on a strange animal. Cool. Uh, so, I cool. Put, put this down. Yes. Thank you so much. Uh, so that was a uh, good thing with the, uh, with the barn doors. Uh, did we forget? Oh, yes. Uh, what a lot of people believe is um, uh, that, for example, if you place the flash where two meters away from, yep. from Ken, and I want to create this nice sh sharp shadow halfway across or on, on the face. Yes, exactly. That is so true. Many people think that with a barn door, you can create this a small line 
of light, like a sharp line of light. And they think that if you are just flapping down like this, you will have this small line of light. That is not true, because when you are actually, when you are doing it like this, when you are flapping this down, you are creating a shadow, right? And the edge of the shadow, the, the, on, on the rim of the shadow, that is the shadow edge from this flap. And the size, the width of this shadow edge will be bigger and bigger uh, uh, when you are far away. So the result will be that you won't get this sharp line when you're using the flaps like that. So on the image where you can see when you're when we're just using the two flaps from up and down, you can yeah. see that the edge is really blurry. Yeah, so that it's is the, the left image that you're looking at right exactly. now. Exactly, and that is because the flaps are so close to the light source. Yeah. So if you want to have a sharp shadow edge, you have to be really close to your subject. So the further away you are, yeah. Exactly. The further away you are, I mean, if you had barn doors with this, with two meter long flags, flaps, then of course you could <laughs> have really sharp <laughs> shadow edges, but it Ooh, would be... Maybe we should create those. Yeah. <laughs> really interesting. Two meter long <laughs> flaps. So you need to be up close or in other words, far away from the light source. Yeah. So you cannot do stripes of light. But if you put your light source really close to a wall like this, then you can actually have ish kind of a striped But even, line. even there you can see that it, it spreads out, it spreads... Exactly, it, re it gets soft really quick. Yeah. So we had a question here from uh, uh, Maxim. Is there a difference in light spread between flat front lights uh, and lights with a protruding dome like acute and pro heads, particularly in large modifiers and used indirectly with big umbrellas? Actually, if you go back two episodes, I think it's episode 19, we went through that and you have images of every single uh, light source. We used uh, uh, anything from A1s to B1s and we used a pro head and uh, uh, in uh, uh, large umbrellas and we even used a three meter giant that you see in the corner behind uh, David right now. And um, if you look at the light stamp, that uh, the spread of light that comes on the wall, there's absolutely no difference at all uh, between those two because the flat fronts, they have a, a, a angle or a light spread from the flash which is big enough to actually spread out on uh, uh, and fill the whole large umbrella. Uh, the only time when it makes a difference is when you use a hard box, for example, which is a very, very odd uh, modifier. And we actually have, maybe David could show it. Yeah, the hard box. Uh, you put your flash in here, boop, and this is where the light comes out. And if you have a flat front like this, you will not see the flash tube. The flash tube has to be exposed to create this small... Uh, light source to create those hard shadow edges. So then you need to have an extruding uh, uh, flash tube. So with a flat, a flat front in a hard box doesn't work. Yeah, but for anything else, all the way to if unless unless you have a bigger umbrella than a three meter umbrella, which is the largest one Profoto makes. I don't know if anyone makes bigger ones than those. Uh, you cannot see a difference in the stamp of light, in, uh, the, the light that actually impacts the image. There's and no difference. Yes, and I would say that there is one thing. If you have a, a pro head with an extruding light bulb uh, and you're shooting into an umbrella, you will see the light source from the side. So you need to have the umbrella reflector. So the light source isn't visible from, you know, a bit from the side. And when you have the light, uh, the, the umbrella reflector, you know, a small reflector, mm. then you have the same reflector as is built in, in the yeah. flat fronts. Exactly. So for an umbrella example, you don't want to have the light, uh, oh, the, the dome, the, exactly, the, the, the extruding, extruding yeah. dome, because, because then you will have sh uh, sharp shadow edges, uh, just a tad from the side. Yeah. So, and we also, we, we used a, a large uh, softbox, uh, I think it was a three by four, and we measured all the different edges, compared the pro head with the B10, and you get exactly the same metrics, and that's all thanks to the, the baffle uh, inside. But uh, there is absolutely, um, 
a, a whole episode, so episode 19, we, we go through all that. Episode 19. Yeah. And Check then we, Michael is talking about the hard box. It's an amazing light. It is an amazing light. And we also, we had episode 17 or so. If you go into uh, Profoto's Facebook page, yeah, we can come and sit down. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Done your, your four, uh, uh, episodes 15, no, 16, I think it was. Uh, we actually had a competition between different light shapers mm -hmm. on which one could create uh, the best sunlight and uh, uh, we used you know magnum or silver umbrellas we used uh, uh, hard box etc and it, it, it creates really really sharp 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 edges it does it and absolutely so it's really cool. does it's really nice um, but you can also do uh, if you use like a zoom reflector or, or a magnum with an uh, with a flat front you get pretty close in if you look at the ac actually the, the the edges of the the shadow there Pretty close, but not as close. The hard box is really the best. And on a hard box, you can actually put on a grid. You can. That's true. Yes, that's so true. Because the hole is the uh, the pro versions of the yeah. grid. It fits exactly. Uh, that is like most cool. things with with Profoto. They they try to make it all the system so you can use stuff with each other. Yeah, maybe. Uh, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Except you can't use the A1 grids on the Pro head. Exactly. So that's a difficult one. But A A1 is a whole separate lighting system with a smaller yeah. uh, head. Yeah. Because that's the only one. All the other ones has the 100 millimeter diameter uh, flash. Yeah, we got a question from Pascal here. Do you, do you know what I mean? Episode, episode 2. Episode <laughs> Fresnel and Parabolic. Well, that's a good, good suggestion. We'll take that into uh, consideration. Uh, I do like the Fresnel. That's one of my favorites. I used it uh, uh, this weekend, actually. Uh, so I, I, I really, really enjoy that. And I have a, I think, yes, I do have a picture of it in, uh, on my Instagram. Uh, I used to do Pro Ring 2 as well. Hmm. It's a lot of fun. Hmm. But uh, yeah, I like the Fresnel. Um, so that's a, a lot of fun uh, to use. Uh, any chance uh, of a grid for the OCF Magnum? Uh, so far, I haven't seen or heard anything about uh, about that. But then, on the other hand, they keep me in the dark when, when it comes to uh, new stuff because they know I'm, I'm leaking like a bucket. <laughs> um, uh, but I, I haven't seen or heard uh, anything about it. Uh, and, and really, the purpose of the OCF Magnum, which we have here, it's so convenient to have all this stuff on the wall. Um, this one is made for the, the, the traveling or the location shooter um, and uh, to make them as small as possible compared to, we have the Magnum here behind us right here. And as you can see, there's a huge difference in, in size. And, and that's why uh, they had to do some compromises on, on the, yeah, no. Yeah, we know, you like that sound. Um, so, so um, uh, there's not really uh, that option for for the for the Magnum uh, when you're on, uh, on location with the OCF Magnum. Is, is it possible to? Is this the same diameter as the zoom reflector, the normal? No. Is this it's no. a bit smaller? This, yeah. So this one is really optimized to make sure that it delivers two x power. Uh, so that if you have a 250 watt uh, light like a B10 or a B2, then you would get uh, the equal output of uh, a thousand watt light. I could actually tell a, a story about when I shot the product images for that for this one. Oh yeah, that's right. Because we yeah, want but all of you might not know that, uh, but David is the guy that actually shoots the all the uh, the pro product portraits as we call them, uh, the black pictures of. Uh, any new product, yeah. um, B10 or... Uh, yeah, and every product has its challenges. And the challenge with this one, from the front, we do it from all sides. Uh, and uh, in the front image, we of course want to, f want to see the light, how the light, we want to see the sides in here. And if you look, if I take my hand like this, I think it will be, where is the camera? Yeah. Is the camera. If I take my hand like this, let's see, like that. Now you can see, now it's the metal surface, and remember here my hand comes, there you can see the hand is totally filling up all the sides. So what I did to make 
the sides inside here to light up in the image was that I put, on, put in a small light like this. We made actually a light out of diffusion paper in a roll like that. Oh, so you have like yes, a I stick, that. Yeah. like a stick of light. And we put, put in that stick of light just like this. Boop. And then we got this perfectly lit area. And we could make gradients on that stick of, of on that roll of diffusion to make gradients inside here. Mm. So, so, but, but here you can really see that it really, the, all the, the angles here are really well designed to really bring out all the light from the light source inside. Yeah. So that is why you get times two of energy from yeah. this one. So this really works. Cool. But yeah. it's always fun to see when you're shooting them because there's uh, tons of different lights and flags and, and uh, yeah. it's very complicated. We yeah. Maybe we should record it. Next time when there's a new product that you need to shoot, we should record that and do like a time lapse or, or just walk around and, uh, and walk through all the different lights, yeah, what they do. That would be cool because be cool. there is so many details and everything, because we do all the images uh, for real. Yes. There's no Photoshop. Every, every little thing Gradients is, is and, made, yeah. for, uh, made in one shot. So that would be really interesting to yeah. make. But uh, I know that we shoot these portrait, uh, these pictures uh, long before they are you know, launched, yeah, launched yeah. which would make this video feel so old when we show it, but still <laughs> interesting. <laughs> yeah, but we, we record it and then we show it when it's launched. Yeah, yeah. Uh, we'll do that next time. Yes, there's always the next time. Always, always the next time. The new, the new stuff. Yep. Uh, so I think that was all the different uh, questions. There's no more questions coming in from there. And, and if we would uh, take some conclusions, uh, on what we have seen today, uh, Snoot limits the light spread and creates a smaller light source. Uh, slightly smaller on the OCF version uh, and uh, a lot smaller on the Pro Head since you have the, the zoom reflector on. Exactly, and you would like to have a smaller light source if you want to make a harder light, like if you're mimicking the sun, for example. Yes. Yes. And, uh, uh, and then the barn door, it controls the light spread. You have much more control that you can you know, take away the left side, right side, or down or up. And, and so you can really play around with those doors. Exactly. There's so many different options. And that is, why, uh, when do you want to do that? I would say that is when you want to control the contrast. If you want more contrast, remove the light from the, from the walls, from the ceiling, from the floor, the, all the surfaces outside of your image. And that is the perfect thing to do with a barn door. And also uh, another way where I've used it is when I took a portrait of you and you had really ugly shoes on you, <laughs> I used the bottom one and I, basically you didn't get any light on your shoes. Yeah. So that's also <laughs> a good thing. And I'm just saying that because you got some compliments on your shoes on <laughs> one of the early episodes. Yeah, but I don't have those shoes anymore. They're gone. Yeah. They're <laughs> now gone. it's only ugly shoes. Uh, only <laughs> ugly shoes. <laughs> yep. And then cool. we have the grids. And then finally grids, which limits the light spread, which is the same as the snoot. But with, compared to the snoot, you have a, 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 a smoother fall off. The gradient from light to dark is actually smoother and looks nicer. Exactly. Uh, so light, light shaping tool uh, can be, uh, can I use to create on one sharp horizontal line over the face? Exactly. What? Light shaping tools to create a sharp line of the face. Oh, gobos. Well, so, so gobos is one thing. Uh, uh, if you, for example, I've played around with the, the A1 because it has a perfect size and oh, perfect. You can make a, a gobo for the, uh, for the A1. So I did one with the cinefoil mm -hmm. and then I used the, the gel holder mm. and because you have these magnets and the magnet rings, so I created that and all, I was all happy, clappy, great, I made this <laughs> little strip of light there and I put it on and of course like we saw on the barn door earlier, uh, it, it's too close to the light source so it doesn't work with yeah. the gobo. Uh, because when you have your, your, your uh, occlusion thing, when you have your obstruction thing that is close to your light source, the shadow edge will be go really wide. Yeah. The further away you are, the thinner the, light, the, the shadow edge will be. So if you are using a gobo, of course you can have a gobo, but you can have it up close. You need to be further away from the light source to get those really hard uh, lines. Or if you, ha if you have a, uh, a multi-spot, for example. If you have a multi-spot. Or the, uh, 
the spot small, which is uh, obsolete now. But if you find some on eBay, uh, don't buy them because me and David we buy them, and Lindsay Adler. I know Lindsay buys them as well. But can you put a gobo in in that one? Is there a holder for? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, there is, and uh, and and those work because they have a lens. There's an optic in. Uh, you have the flash, and then you have a lens, and then you put the gobo after that, and that's why yeah, because it actually works. You, you can zoom uh, the optics and, and move it back and forth and make it really sharp. Exactly. So it works if you have an optic. Otherwise, if you want to create that, then I would just recommend use uh, 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 black cardboard or a piece of cardboard and place it as close as possible to, if I'm shooting, if I have the flash over here and I'm shooting David, I would put it as close, just outside of the picture frame. And the further away the flash is, the further away you can have this, but you always exactly. want it as close as possible. And the limits always are where the image, <laughs> the edges of the image are. Yeah. So, so you have to work really with the, the, the positioning of the light and the positioning of the piece of cardboard. And the positioning of me. Yeah. And actually there is one more, even more effective way to create a light like that. Using a mirror. If you oh, have yeah. a mirror, you can have any size actually of a mirror and just put you know black cloth on it so you just get it stri this stripe of a mirror then it's so easy to if you have a flash far away with a grid mm -hmm. to light on the mirror and the reflection would be just that stripe yes because then you have the mirror close to the subject again and see, it's so easy to have the flash anywhere. Yeah. Uh, you can twist this mirror, so it's much easier. Actually. But the mirror is close. The mirror, the is mirror close. is close. Yeah. yeah, I th actually think that if you have the mirror far away, you, I think the shadow edges won't change so much if you have the flash far away because the distance distance is is much farther further away. So this won't do so much to to the, the edge. edge. But the the size of the uh, the light stripe would of course change. Yeah, Mirror is a good thing, or you use cardboard. Yeah. And really important, if you're using mirror, mirrors, then you must use grids. Because if you don't use a grid on your flash, you will light up everything that will ruin the contrast. So you still will have the, the shadow edges, but the rest will also be uh, lifted. The shadows will be lifted. So the light, lighter. Exactly. Yeah. So you need to have a grid or a barn door or something to control the light so it only hits the mirror. The mirror, yeah. yeah. Cool. Yep. I think we... Okay, so a flag gobo is going to do the trick for you. Well, uh, uh, cinefoil... Uh, oh, Andy is, he, Andy is using the barn doors for his white background uh, when he's shooting in a small studio. Flags off the light from hitting the side of the face of the client instead it just, just goes on the white background that I'm lighting. Exactly. Yeah, so that's also very, very good use if you want light the background, for example, if you're going to take a, 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 a headshot, for example, um, and, uh, and you want to have a completely white, uh, blown out uh, background, then you can light it. And then instead of having light from the flash hitting, if I have it here behind you, I don't want light to hit you and create a kicker, unless I want to have a kicker. But then you can use the barn doors and flag off so that light does not hit the subject that or the talent that you're Yes. Shooting. And that is actually something I, I use bondors, I would say that maybe seven times out of ten for that purpose. Yeah. Just to exactly like that, to, to avoid the spill lights. I actually, I shouldn't, maybe I shouldn't say it, but I actually 3D printed uh, a one bondor bondor <laughs> <laughs> just doing that. Just to stop light from going in, in sideways directions because I, I, needed a, I needed that. And I actually used to do them. Uh, with the gaffer tape just to stop the spill yeah, lights going yeah. from the side. But the bondor is, I mean, that's the best thing to do. You can it. reuse it and, and exactly. easier. Yeah. So I agree, that is a really common use for the, the bondors. And then Leo, I guess Leo is in, in uh, from France or uh, maybe even from Paris. There's a show, Salon de Foutou is actually on this weekend. Uh, but unfortunately, we're not coming to Salon de Foutou. Sorry. No. We are not, but it would be great to be there. We were there. Uh, I was there last year, actually, um, and uh, there are, of course, a lot of other people uh, in Paris on Salon de Foutou. So a lot of uh, uh, really, really competent uh, uh, photographers. You're going to have a lot of great shows uh, on the pro photo stage. It's going to be fully packed with uh, uh, a lot of uh, light theory uh, and, and so forth. 
uh, over there. So it's still worth going to Salon de Futur. Excellent. Uh, I think that's about it. Uh, oh, oh no, I know, <laughs> Leo, sorry for that. Uh, uh, but maybe next year we, we uh, aim for uh, making sure that we, we get there. Because it, it's, uh, it's a great show. It's, it's a great show. It yep. is a great show, yeah. I heard a lot hey, of good things. Hey, JB is uh, in the house. JB? Uh, yeah, we met me, JB. Ah, in, JB. Uh, yes. <laughs> Hello. Uh, we played with him uh, earlier this year. Yes. Uh, right after summer in Alaska. Um, uh, or at least send Ken. I, well, I think... I don't know, is Ken there? I think Actually, I, uh, I had got so many requests from f uh, to get Ken to, to Paris. Uh, but there, there is so I have so few examples left, so I'm really trying to find some way to fix that. I'm trying yeah. to find where can I take one can head to send to Paris. <laughs> so we'll figure, we'll try to figure that out. It's actually a funny story because you have a lot of can heads, but there's <laughs> <laughs> yeah, actually I, I have a lot of can heads, <laughs> but something happened on the shipment to my studio. I had all these. Can heads on a uh, pal, how do you say that? You a know, a pallet. A pallet. Uh, and someone on the ship who shipped the can heads dropped uh, uh, a, con container, a container. Yeah. A container on that. So all the heads were smashed. I haven't told anyone this before. Now I tell every one of you. Yeah. So all the can heads that I ordered was totally smashed. <laughs> and they are. You know, really different. <laughs> yeah, they really, look really different. funny. They're, you get really interesting uh, when you try, try to put a Rembrandt on those. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> it's kind of interesting. interesting. It's really interesting. Yeah, so yeah. Uh, I am lacking those heads right now. Oh, um, Pascal is going to be in in Paris. That's good, Pascal. Take care of all the, our friends over in in Paris, because uh, I know you've been here in, at Profoto, Pascal, and you've been trained, so you know all the good stuff. Uh, so make sure that you answer all the cool questions. And if you have any questions that you can't answer, you have my details, Pascal. You just uh, call me or send me a message and uh, I will help you. No, it doesn't matter if it's during the weekend because I'll be actually at the trade show uh, at the Photographiska Museum here in Stockholm. Yeah, me too. Yeah. So we'll be there. And so if there are any questions, find Pascal, hunt him down on, um, he's probably be standing behind a croissant or something like that. <laughs> um, behind a croissant. Yeah, in this position. <laughs> uh, yeah. So find him, ask for Pascal, and, uh, and he, he will pass on the questions to us. Hmm. Uh, oh, Andy is coming to Fotografiska. Yes, uh, I'm going to be there all three days. Uh, and you're going to be there I will Friday? be there the first day. Friday? Yeah. Okay. And then I will have a headache on the second day. Yeah. So Andy, if you show up on Friday, you'll have David there. And if you show up on Friday, Saturday, Sunday, I'll be there. Yeah. So it would be great to chat to you. Uh, I've seen your name and I know where you live. Uh, and I actually, I think Andy, I think you forgot a power thing at my studio many years ago. I still have it. I think it was you who forgot the power thing. You know, you charge your, your cell phones with it. <laughs> and I have yours exactly. as well. You <laughs> I have <laughs> every... <laughs> I have you so... Borrowed, but never got it I back. have so many chargers. Yeah. Anywho, uh, so see you, Andy, on Friday. And uh, I think we, we, we can continue talking about a lot of things. We covered what we should cover. So I think we will uh, uh, say thank you for watching and uh, keep on posting. Oh, yes, bring my charger, Andy, he will. I will. Uh, he's, he's, he's told me actually like about 10 times that he's <laughs> going to bring my charger, but he hasn't yet. Do, do you have it today? I, I no, because no, I okay. have it, uh, I know where it is. I can't I promise you anything, Andy, I'm, I'm sorry, but uh, I'll, it, I'll remind him. Your charger has a special box in my studio, <laughs> orange cord, I know it's. <laughs> Excellent. So, thank you everybody and uh, see you soon. A lot of love from us to you guys. Thank you for watching and uh, keep posting questions. Yep. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Do you want to learn how to light the background? In this course, we scrap all the unnecessary, overwhelming information that you see online today. Here's what you actually need to start lighting the background. My name is David Bischo. I am the light shaping expert at Profoto Academy. And in this
this course you will learn the different types of shadows, light pattern, enhancing the background. Different type of shadows, the importance of understanding self shadows and how to shape thrown shadows. Light pattern, how to control the light pattern and how that impacts contrast. Enhance the background, how to enhance the background in an exciting and natural way. So join me in this course and I will show you how to get started today, no matter the equipment you're using. Thank you.